Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to the HTML basics video. So let's get started. So the objectives for this tutorial is for you to understand the basics of HTML and then at the end of the tutorial you're going to be creating your first HTML document, otherwise known as a web page. So we're going to learn a bunch of terms uh, starting with HTML, syntax, semantics, tags, both opening and closing, elements, attributes, and boilerplate HTML. So first and foremost, what is HTML? HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's how we structure a web page. Every website on the internet uses HTML. We wrap text inside of HTML tags to give it meaning. So this is referred to as semantics. You can see some example HTML code right here. So we have a, this is a heading line and it's wrapped inside of this funny looking code here where it's a less than h1 greater than sign and then the same thing here but it has a forward slash. We'll talk more about what that means in a minute but basically these three lines of code are going to output what you see here in a browser. So if you want to see an interactive example just click this link whenever you have the slides open and you can go to this code pen where I have the HTML here and then immediately below it is the preview of what that HTML would look like in the browser. Okay, so what are tags? HTML tags are anything that comes between the less than and the greater than symbols. So here's an example of an opening tag. We have our less than symbols, we have the word body, and then we have a greater than symbol. And then here's an example of a closing tag. So we have the exact same thing except before the text we have this forward slash. So we'll talk more about what the closing tag does in a second, but before we talk about that, tags and their attributes are what make up the language's syntax. So here we have the anatomy of an HTML tag. And this is actually the anatomy of an HTML element, which we'll talk more about in a second, but you have your opening tag, your closing tag, remember the forward slash is there before the text, and then you have content, which is just regular text. Okay, so what is syntax? Syntax is a set of rules we must follow to write valid code in any programming language. In this case, obviously, we're talking about HTML. Well, it's how we write and structure our code so the computer can read it correctly and give us the desired output without any errors. If we were to write a typo in one of our HTML tags, then that would be considered a syntax error. So why do we need opening and closing tags? So the hint for this is elements. Opening and closing tags together with some content are what make an element in HTML. The term wrapping is used to describe the opening and the closing tags being placed around the content. So an element looks like this. So just like we saw a moment ago where we had the anatomy of an HTML tag, well that was actually the anatomy of an HTML element which is comprised of opening and closing tags and then some text or some content between those tags. So given this code right here, now the browser will see this element and know that the text between the opening and closing tags is supposed to represent a paragraph, note the p tag here, when it gets outputted to the user as part of a web page. So HTML elements are what give our pages content meaning and structure. Without them, we would just have a bunch of text on a page. So some elements are going to appear different than other elements, and that happens because of CSS, which is cascading style sheets, and that's how we style our code. But we're not going to talk about that in this lecture. But just know that the way that we're able to style these things differently is because the browser knows the difference between one set of text and another set of text because it's wrapped up in these HTML tags, therefore making it an element, and so we can differentiate between what is what. Okay, so what are attributes? Well, attributes are extra values that can be assigned to an element in order to augment or customize its default behavior. Some elements won't function properly without their default attributes. So for example, the image tag needs a source, or SRC, attribute to point to the URL or path where the image is located. 
Otherwise, no image will appear. So see an example of this below. We have an image tag, IMG. We have our opening and our closing um, less than greater than signs wrapped around image. And then we have SRC equals and then a quotation and a URL here and an, another quotation. And then we have another attribute called alt and it says equal quotation some text quotation. So we'll talk about alt in a second, but as you can see, without this source pointing to an image on the internet, or it could also be pointing to a server or to your local computer, that image will not show anything. It needs to be connected to an image, okay? So if you wanna see an interactive example of this, go ahead and click here. And we can see that this image gets loaded because of this link here. And if you were to copy this, I just use Command C to copy, and paste it into its own browser tab, that would actually load the image on its own, okay? So we're using the image tag, pointing to that image somewhere on the internet, and that's what makes it pop up here. Now remember, like I said, without this attribute, the image tag's not gonna show anything. So if I pull it out, now nothing pops up except for this alt text here that says squirrel. And we'll talk more about that here in a second. So I'm gonna put this back in here and close this. And let's go to the next slide. Okay, so what is that alt attribute doing? The alt attribute allows us to give a short description to the image. This is used for screen reading software, and this makes the web page more accessible to persons who are blind or visually impaired. So it also takes place of the image in the event that the source URL is broken. So like we just saw a moment ago, when I took that whole source attribute out and removed the URL, this is what we ended up with, this little broken image icon and then the alt text. So this is what you would see if the image wasn't linked to properly. So what are the most common HTML tags? Which ones will you need to know to build your first web page? So in my experience, the most common HTML tags are as follows. The dot .type HTML tag, and this one is specifically for telling the web page that we're using HTML5 syntax, which is the newest version of HTML. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And then the opening and closing HTML tags, opening and closing head, meta, title, opening and closing, link, script, opening and closing, body, h1 through h6 so this is h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 h6 and these are headings uh, h1 being the biggest and most important h6 being the smallest and least important as far as how the browser views it so p remember that's paragraph div this is for division uh, division of content span a stands for anchor image we just saw this a moment ago in action ul which is unordered list ol ordered list list item which goes inside of a ul or an ol a form for creating a like a contact form or a sign up form things like that input for living inside of the form and then button for creating all different types of button including buttons that can submit a form okay so as you'll see in the note there's a lot more that we'll learn but let's start with these since we don't even need all the tags listed here to build our first working web page okay so you may be asking why do some of the opening tags not have closing tags? There are a few elements in HTML that don't require a closing tag because they don't wrap around any text. We call these self-closing tags. For example, the meta tag, link tag, input, and image tags are all self-closing. Okay, so what about that doc type tag? Now, if you remember from before, this is the tag that we place at the very beginning of our HTML document, and it is what tells the browser that we're using HTML5 syntax in our document. So without it, some of the elements may not render correctly because the browser may think, okay, they're using HTML4, and if you use some syntax that's from the latest uh, version of HTML, which is HTML5, then it may not know how to handle that appropriately. So here's an example of an HTML document with no, no content per se, just what we call the boilerplate code. So it's the code that every single HTML5 document must have in order to work properly. You can think of it as a template or a starting point for every HTML document that you write. So 
we're setting the language for the web page as English. We have a head element, and inside of it, it has a meta, which de uh, determines the character set, and then a title. And the title is going to set the title up here in the top left corner on the browser tab. And then the body, and the body is really important. I mean, they're all important, but the body is the element that will house all the other elements that are going to be visible for visitors of our website. So what's the difference between HTML and HTML5? So HTML5 is HTML, but it's the latest version of HTML. It includes everything we've covered thus far, plus some new syntax that we'll cover later. And if you want, you can click on this link right here, and it'll take you to a current list of all HTML elements that are in existence. So if we click here, this is the developermozilla.org website, uh, MDN. And if you scroll down, you can see all of them listed on the left-hand side here. And as you scroll down, you can see descriptions for every single element. So they've got categories, and you can go down, and there's quite a bit. So if you want to spend some time looking through here to see all the different elements, then go ahead and check it out. And just remember that HTML is all about semantics. So we just want to name elements based on what they're going to be used for. So as you're going through here, you'll see things like video. Well, what do we think that is? It's for a video that gets embedded on our page. Image, that's for images. Audio, that's for audio. And so on and so forth. So go ahead and take a look through this resource and check out all the different elements that are available to you. All right, so now we're to the exercise because I feel like the best way for this stuff to sink in is for you to get your hands dirty and build something of your own right away. So create a profile page with the following elements. You can use a image tag for a profile picture. You can put your name in there, first and last name or anything you like inside of an H1. Remember that's the biggest heading and the most important heading. Uh, a short biography inside of a paragraph. A link to your GitHub or your LinkedIn or if you want your Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, whatever, inside of an anchor tag. A list of your hobbies. So you can put those inside of an unordered list or an ordered list. Um, and then each individual list item is going to live inside of a list item element. So as a bonus, you can put a contact form. Now it's not going to work, as in it's not going to submit information anywhere that like to a database or a server or anything like that, but just make it appear visually on the page. So you can choose um, to use the form, which you're going to need, and then uh, some inputs if you like, or a text area, and a button to submit the form. I want you to use Mozilla Developer Network, the link from the previous slide. Uh, use Google, use Stack Overflow, whatever you need to use to be able to figure out everything you need to make this possible. And then you can check the solution and you can see how I did it. And if you can't find certain things online, which you should be able to find everything you need fairly easily, but if you're having difficulty, don't spend too much time on it. Feel free to skip ahead and watch the solution. So you may be wondering, hey, where am I going to write this code? How am I going to write this code? You haven't explained any of this to us. So to get started, uh, you can write this code in any text editor. You could write it in Microsoft Word if you want to. Uh, I don't recommend doing that because Word is going to kind of change some things automatically based on the type of program that it is. But you could use Notepad if you're in Windows. You could use TextMate or I think it's like Note++ or Text++, something like that. Basically anything that you can write text in, you can use. But there are programs specifically for writing code and they are free. So a couple of those are Sublime Text. You can go to sublimetext.com and just download it. Uh, they do have a version that you can purchase, but it's Nagware, which means you can just cancel it every time they ask you to purchase it and you'll have it for free indefinitely. I prefer to use Sublime Text. I've always used it. I like it a lot. Uh, you can get it for any operating system and it's really easy to use. There's other options like Atom from Atom.io, also free. And then another good one is Brackets from Brackets.io, and that's also free. Uh, lastly, if you don't want to download anything to your computer, then you can use CodePen from CodePen.io. Free to sign up. We'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, in any event, just find a way to write this stuff 
uh, and then save it as a file on your desktop and just make sure you use the extension uh, make sure the last part is .html okay so go ahead and do that now try to solve this exercise and we will see you uh, in a little bit when you get back with your solution alright so here we are I'm assuming that you've already built uh, your solution for the exercise this is a quick preview we've got our profile picture uh, first and last name and a heading a little paragraph for our biography that says family man traveler surfer loves long walks in the forest and steaming cups of green tea and this is starting to sound like a dating profile and then there's a link for visit my github and then some hobbies in an unordered list it's unordered because it just has these uh, bullet points as opposed to an ordered list that would have numbers one two three etc so we have surfing rock climbing woodworking and yoga Oh, this guy sounds really interesting okay so then there's a contact form we've got a label here for an email a label for message and then a text area for the message and a button to submit the form that says contact me okay so that looks great let's go ahead and take a look at the code and see what that looks like so click here and if you're wondering what this is this is CodePen CodePen is a really great online editor that allows you to create websites very quickly for collaboration for testing to work with other people uh, it's just a nice way to be able to edit code and see the output very quickly so I definitely encourage you to go to codepen.io and sign up for a free account when you're going to the sign up here we'll go ahead and take a look at it now so this is the home page here if you click sign up then it's going to give you all these paid options but there is a little link in the top right corner that says join CodePen for free so once you're here where it says free then you enter your first name your username or first name last name whatever uh, username email your password verify that you're not a robot with this free captcha and then submit it and I think you're good to go I don't know if you have to verify your email or not um, but they'll let you know either way once you have that then you can create what are called pens and that's what we're looking at here so this is a pen that I've created and I've saved and now immediately I have a URL that I can show students or other people they can visit it from anywhere and they can see the code that I wrote and then the output from that code okay so enough of that let's go ahead and look at the code for the solution to this exercise so you'll notice that I started out with the boilerplate I've got the doc type with HTML up top that tells the browser that we're using HTML5 and you might get a little warning down here and this is telling you um, you don't need doc type because code pen already puts it in there for you don't worry about that for the sake of the exercise I just want everyone to be able to see that doc type is supposed to be in there as if you were doing it on your own computer okay so there's doc type and then I have HTML with the lang attribute set to en that's English and then inside of the head element this is the area of the document where information about the web page goes that the browser needs but the visitors to the web page don't necessarily get to see okay this stuff is hidden and it includes things like metadata the title which is visible in that it shows up here at the top in the tab um, and then there's other things that we're gonna learn about later like links and scripts etc that you can put inside of there so now for the fun part we have the body and then of course the closing body and closing HTML you can see that HTML is the outermost tag and head and body are adjacent so they're side by side but they're both nested inside of HTML so the first thing I start with is the image tag I give it a source attribute and then I pass in a link to an image I also include an alt attribute and say surfer profile pic so this just tells screen readers what the image is and then of course if the image was broken then it would show everybody what the image was supposed to be I have another attribute that we haven't talked about and that's width this is an inline way of styling the image this is a pretty big image it came out to like here I think so I wanted to make it smaller so I pass in 300 and that makes it 300 pixels wide and then the height of the image gets changed um, in relation to the width so that the image doesn't get skewed okay so then we have our heading one and that's John Doe right here and then beneath that we have a paragraph so this is for the bio and that's right here 
and then the anchor tag. So if you look this up, you probably discovered that the way that we link the text that comes between the opening and closing anchor tags is by adding an href attribute. And so that will link to whatever the value inside of the quotations is after the equal sign. Okay, so the next thing I have is an H2. This is another heading. It's not as big or viewed as important by the browser. Uh, and this is for hobbies, okay? And then I have an unordered list and nested inside of that list, I have one, two, three, four list items. So surfing, rock climbing, woodworking, yoga. And then right beneath that, I have an H3. Again, this is smaller than the H2 and the H1. And it's for contact me. Now I have a form. So this isn't a complete form. You'll learn more about making forms work and the extra attributes that you have to add to them to do that. But for now, I have a form element and inside of that element, I have three division elements that are all side by side. Inside of each of those division elements, I have a label and an input. So if you don't have a label or you don't have a division element, uh, don't worry about that. This is extra. Uh, if you want, go ahead and look these things up so you know what they're doing. I'll try to explain it as best I can in this video, but this is extra stuff that I threw in. I wouldn't expect uh, someone to find these things out on their first try. Okay, so the label is just the text that we have that sits right next to the input. And then this is a text area, so there's another label sitting next to it. So you can see we have a label. It's for email, and then that matches up with the ID of email on the input. We'll talk a little bit more about labels and how they match up to forms in a latter lecture. Um, but you can see I have a placeholder attribute that puts the text grayed out as a placeholder inside of here. And then once we start typing, it gets replaced with whatever we enter. So then in the second division, I have another label for message and then a text area, opening and closing uh, text area tags to make a text area element. And then inside of here, you can type your text. So I also have another division for the button with a type of submit, which is important. You'll learn more about this later, but that attribute just says that this button is a special button that submits the form that it lives inside of. And I've gone ahead and set the text inside of that button to be contact me. So again, if you didn't get all these elements, that's totally fine. Just review this stuff, look some of it up, find out what it's doing, why it's doing it. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Okay, so there you have it. There's your first HTML document or web page. You'll notice that some of these elements look different than each other. So like the there's a underline here and there's a bold, uh, larger font here and here and there's bullet points. So this is an HTML that's doing that. That's CSS. Um, the browser has default style sheets so it knows how to make certain HTML elements look so you can differentiate between them. And then once you learn CSS later, you can customize that to make it look even more different. So this is obviously pretty bland. It looks like a, like a Word document or something. But in latter lectures, you'll learn about CSS and you'll be able to make this stuff look really cool like all the web pages that you see online. Okay, so one last bonus for you. If you have your code that you wrote and you wanna compare it to my solution, you can do it visually, which is fine. But another way to do it very quickly and automatically is with an online tool called diff checker. So you'll go to diffchecker.com and you'll just paste in your code here. So let's say I have an H1 something something and that's your code. And then I have my code H1 something else and you find the difference and right away it highlights this right here and this right here letting you know that that's the difference between your code and my code. So this is a great tool. You might bookmark it. It's called diffchecker.com. It's just a free way to see the difference between text. And we can use it specifically for checking the differences between exercise solutions uh, and whatever code you came up with. All right, that's it for HTML basics. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.